en los años 60, un estudio sobre la psicología del amor se centró en su forma más primaria, la maternidad. Un experimento con monos restos exploró la necesidad de amor maternal experimentada por los infantes. Se ofreció a los bebés una opción entre dos madres sustitutas. Las dos estaban hechas de alambre. Una tenía un tetero que era la única fuente de alimento del bebé, mientras que la otra no tenía nada que ofrecer más que un indicio de cara y una envoltura de tela suave. En promedio, cada infante pasó menos de una hora al día con la madre proveedora de alimento y más de 17 horas con la madre de tela. La suavidad, la mera sugerencia del cuerpo de la madre, era lo que los bebés anhelaban, aún más que el alimento. Estudios más recientes han descubierto la bioquímica que subyace en el vínculo madre e hijo y revelan que el amor maternal es en realidad adictivo. En la investigación que hemos hecho, hemos descubierto en primates un químico glú que uh, bonde a la madre y al infante juntos. Ese glú se llama beta-endorfin. Es un químico en el brain que tiene mucho que ver con mantener los comportamientos que promueven la closeness, como like grooming, contact, hugging, cuddling, y así. So What's really interesting about that is that's a very similar chemical to morphine. And we know that morphine is a drug that's very reinforcing and rewarding. So we believe that when mothers and infants feel close together, that there are little spurts of this chemical released in the brain, and that not only does that make them feel closer together, but they also behave in ways that are calming. Las elefantas tienen fama de ser buenas madres, pero lo que el cineasta Martin Kolbeck presenció mientras trabajaba en Kenia fue una extraordinaria demostración de devoción maternal. I was making it for the first elephant film I did, Echo of the Elephants. We decided to follow one particular family of elephants over an extended period of time. And it was led by a matriarch called Echo. La hembra de más alto rango en este rebaño era siempre fácil de reconocer por sus colmillos. Tenían la forma de dos comas que se cruzaban en la punta. About two months after we started filming, Echo, the matriarch, gave birth. We went out first thing in the morning, and sure enough, there was Echo with this brand new newborn calf just beneath her. And we were absolutely delighted because we had a new calf to film. However, as we started filming, we suddenly noticed that this young male calf was having a great deal of difficulty standing. There was something badly wrong with its front feet. They were completely scrunched beneath it. And so all it could do was shuffle around on its knees. We were concerned. We thought that this, this elephant's going to die. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Because it was shuffling along on its knees, it would rub its knees raw and then it would become infected and that would be a horrible slow death. Um, so we weren't happy to be filming this, um, but to see the reactions of the elephants to this situation was, was very revealing. On that first day, the matriarch Echo was on her own. Out in the middle of an open pan, she had a newborn calf and the calf's older sister. We called her Enid. A pesar de la lucha por la vida del bebé, el rebaño también debía permanecer vivo, por lo que siguió para buscar alimento. Los rebaños de elefantes raramente se separan, pero no había forma de que el bebé se sostuviera. The calf's older sister suddenly became very torn about whether she should stay with the newborn calf and the matriarch, or whether she should go with the rest of the family. Echo started to try and get the calf to its feet. And they'll actually nudge it and they'll, they'll lift it with the trunk. So Echo was trying to lift the calf off its front feet and it became more and more tired as the morning went on because it got hotter and hotter. But Enid started to, to wander off towards the family, but she was clearly torn. 
it was extraordinary to see it because she would stop, she would hesitate, she would look back, and then Echo would try and get the calf up, and he would just grunt. He'd make this low, low, um, complaining grunt, whereupon Enid would just turn around and come rushing back. Enid stayed with the matriarch the whole time. They were always there. And I remember one particularly amazing scene on the second day. Coming towards us through the woodland was Echo, Enid, and then finally the calf. And he was just shuffling along on his knees. They would walk a few paces, and they would stop, turn, both of them, look at the calf and wait for it to catch up. Then they would very slowly move on a bit more. Stop, turn, wait for it to catch up. And this was just a painstaking way for this poor calf to walk. La muerte del bebé parecía inevitable. De pronto, hubo una señal de esperanza. On the third day, there was a little bit of flexibility in these front feet. And then as the day progressed, um, the family didn't move much that day. The calf tried to exercise the feet. He had to sort of squat down, put the soles of his feet on the ground, and then stand up. And he did that tirelessly, up and down, up and down, up and down. Incredibly, he, he suddenly stood up. He was very wobbly. He, he stood up for a few seconds and then he, you know, there was obviously not enough strength in his feet. And he, he went down on his knees again, but he just kept trying. By the end of that third day, this calf could stand. El bebé había sido tan grande que sus tendones no pudieron alargarse mientras aún estaba en la matriz. Él solo necesitaba el tiempo y paciencia que su madre le dio para estirar las piernas. Echo es un extraordinary elephant, I think. She's an old matriarch. She's in her 50s. She's a very experienced mother. And she just got on with it and she, she knew what she had to do. One of the most important things for any mammal to have is care. No young mammal can survive without maternal devotion. So young animals have very powerful emotional systems to solicit care when they're lost or out of contact with their parents. They cry. They show separation calls. And this alerts mothers usually, sometimes fathers also, to come back to look for the offspring. 